fields of gold. All the bee boys. Yesterday was the first day. All right. You know, it'll be cool if somebody would just stand without a suit. <laughs> and you don't get sunk. Is that side. I was gonna say you should just use this as well. Right, so James is gonna take us through his system now of uh, of uh, doing his foot. Big one for the sand on top is going to choose one of those and then work from there. <laughs> 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 I went yeah. to my uh, my beekeeping mentor where I learned uh, beekeeping in Israel. Yeah. The first thing he said to me so was, "Use more smoke." You don't be scared to use smoke, guys. Um, as James said, this is your friend. Okay, I take this. This is a honey. This was just the space thing, yeah. Okay. So we just gave an extra super for space on some of these hives to um, try and limit um, uh, swarming. As I said, when I come to a colony and I want to know if it's ready for splitting, I'll look at what they've done to the foundation. This one had seven frames of foundation in it that the bees had to draw out. So once they've drawn out six or seven, you know that they are, there are enough bees if they're able to draw out that much. I'll be your friend, let me help you. Okay, okay. First, first thing I do is the first frame I'm looking at is drone brood here. Okay. No, we can't see behind you. Drone brood? Okay. Mm -hmm. This colony is definitely ready for blood. Ah. <laughs> okay, a honey frame. Honey with a little bit of brood on here. So this is nectar. So when did you put those frames in the box? I put the whole box on uh, probably two weeks ago. Okay. They can, when they're strong enough, they can build up incredibly quickly. They'll draw out that foundation within within two three days. Okay. Beautiful brood. Open brood. <laughs> Yeah. Tap brood. What yeah, can you brood? show so the side This of is what I call my mixed brood. Oh, okay. Really? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. so this isn't going to have too many frames. Same with this one. Okay, the whole thing with this, what we're trying to do 
is prevent the queen from being transferred. And he has a nice pollen frame. There's a little bit of brood on here, no? but it's a pollen frame. We want pollen. Last one, it's only nectar. Nice, yeah. Look at that brood. Yeah. That's a slab of six, six and a half thousand bees that are wow. going to come out of that, guys. That's yeah. full yeah. sheets of, yeah. of foundation. You won't get that without Not easy anyway. Nice and that, that stays there. Um, that stays in the bottom. I don't need cap brood. If we're short, we can always move it up, but I don't need cap brood. I only need open brood. They're starting to run out of space and they're packing pollen in. So this is the time when we're working our brood chamber, making more space for the queen all the time. I'm going to chance it and put that upstairs. I agree. Because? Um, it's mostly um, capped brood and nectar. Okay. But there's a chance that there's going to be some open brood. That's a pollen spray. We'll see if we need one still, but otherwise I'm leaving that down. See, they're running out of space, that's why the queen was upstairs. They packed with pollen and nectar in the bottom. Very quickly on the canola. That looks like it. I think more of a... I think it's like a full size queen cell. What do you do with when you have a queen cell? Do you move it to the top? So that, that queen cell doesn't look like it's a queen cell that's emerged and it hasn't got an egg in it. Can we have a look? There's a queen cell on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's not a full size um, cell and there's no egg or larva or anything in there. James, should you have a queen cell which is right, will you move it to the top? Um, we just cut at it this stage I'll destroy it because if I move it to the top it's just going to mess up everything. Why? Because it will hatch before all the others, it will put all my timing out, everything like that. Okay, there's a little bit of open brood in here. Quite nice having these deep floors because the bees can run around underneath without with all of this manipulation. It gives mm. you space without squashing the queen. They're generally underneath the frames. This queen fell there. I just saw the queen. You, you knocked her off. Yeah, I knocked her yeah, off. Yeah. Okay. There she goes. I just she's just behind this frame. She's running along okay. there. So there was at some stage. Say, what is your policy on the old queen cell? Do you leave them? 
Keep it natural. Keep it natural. I, I generally pull them off because it just lets me know the next time I've come there, there are fresh cells that probably hatch at some stage. I don't have the luxury of the time that you have. No, definitely not. <laughs> you know, I've got to get through so many. I don't have time to, to, to do that, that, proper, that proper management that you do, James. Lots of pollen, lang pollen. So we, we've already got enough frames in this top box. Why don't you put up some pollen to the top box? Sorry? Why don't you put some pollen onto the top box? There's already two frames of oh, pollen okay, in the sorry, top. Okay. So, so what are you leaving in the bottom box now, James? So I'm leaving kept fruit or anything that I don't need. Um, this frame that I'm now I'm wanting to pull it up. So can I con can I join you on this? Yeah, sure. I'm going to move the pollen bound and nectar bound frames just to the outside, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm going to the outside. I'm going to consolidate the brood together. Okay, so these full frames of brood, I want them all the brood together, and I want to move the pollen, right? Mm -hmm. Pollen bound frames on the outside. So we've got pollen honey, pollen honey. And then our brood in the middle. So we've got those three frames of brood and then James is coming with these beautifully drawn out new combs that we're going to put right next to the brood nest so the queen can move on to them. Even if they've got nectar in them. And the bees will move the nectar. The bees will move the nectar. They don't move the cap, cap yeah. honey so well, yeah. but they'll move the nectar. So I generally would like to put in three frames of um, drawn foundation in the bottom. And then you've got, look what we've got here, we've got four new frames of foundation. That's a beautiful brood nest for the queen to move on to when she needs the space. <coughs> and then in the top, what we do also is those nicely drawn combs, we'll leave them in the middle. And then we'll move the honey pollen frames and the crappy combs, the older frames, into the outside spot. Sorry James, I don't mean to yeah. uh, take over from you no, here. for sure. Uh, can I help you with the queen no, excluder? Yeah. Right. <laughs> queen excluder. And if you don't want to kill the bees, just a little smoke, guys. Just a little smoke and they run away from it. Just, uh, just move the frames together like James has done. There we go. We're lucky the bees are not fierce. We're very, very lucky. I'm just going to Two years in a row. <laughs> well, you see this poor, this poor conditioned comb with the drone brood. It doesn't matter if we put it on the outside. Because the queen doesn't work on the outside. She works on these middle six, seven frames. So we've got another poor frame. No, that's a hazard. Is it a fresh one? But I don't know if it's open. The beginnings. Yeah. Quite right, Andrew. It's yeah. like a shop. It's, it's no larvae in there, but there's, 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 there's royal jelly in there. There's royal jelly in there. I don't yeah. know. Just squash it, please. Thank you. Yeah. Do this because it's going to mess up the timing of your... Yeah, and that one will emerge and kill all the others and then you'll come back and there's a queen excluder in between. The queen will have been stuck up here. When the queen gets too old and hasn't mated, apparently that can cause a problem. I've just been told that. I've had no experience of that. Okay, on this one we're going to put the super back. That's just for space. Because we've shaken everything through before. Yeah, as long as we begin to eat, this box was as long as we begin to eat, the men's party will be all in. Then what we're going to do is all other bees get shaken on the bottom. Then it's going to be dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kijk hoe leuk. Zijn er werken op Pindar? Zijn er niet Pindar? Zijn er niet Pindar? Pindar, ja. Ja, 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 ja
Maar dat is niet op die volume bij je een stuur dan te draaien, maar je kunt toch een uitbouw zijn, niet spaarzen van bij je om te kunnen in de kaart te doen. Maar dat is een uitbouw van niet, dat is een beetje Right, so what's the plan from here, James? Is this 10 days? 10 days. And then you come and check for queen cells? Yeah. The alternative is we do it now, tonight, we take the split away. We don't do it tonight, 10 days. We're still doing the, the middle one now. Well, that's up to you. You can you can take the original one away, the bottom, with, with the and put in yeah with the queen and put a new floor on here. That will also work. As I said, with mine is typically at the beginning of canola. I like to do mine the other way, so I can get more splits out. So you're just gonna you're just gonna take this lid off, put it on the floor, and then fit the two together. You're not yeah, gonna yeah. screw the floor on because you're just sticking it up. No, no, no. Not at this stage. No. Keep it simple. <laughs> Especially if you're going to do 30 or 40 of them. Yeah. If you're going to do one, fine, you can bugger around and spend hours, but you actually want to just do one function. Take your split off, take it away. Yeah. And then the next time you get to the bees and you can do all those other little things. Yeah, you can... You'll see on mine, I've got plates on the outside. Yeah, so um, little, little, little yeah, so while we are working the bees, I have a guy who just goes around and forcing his claws on, on hives that are going into pollination. Yeah. If they're not going into pollination, I never force my claws on. I'll show you when I do it. I'm going to do a split. I'm going to show you why and how I do it, and I'll talk about it then. Okay. No, it's okay. Keep it natural. Let them build a bit of their own stuff. And I like to. It doesn't bother me because you just chop it out later. Yeah. James, are you done here? I'm done. So did you guys get what James did? It's basically what I described. Also, you're taking the young brood up. And 10 days time, they should have started the queen cell. And you can pull the split off in 10 days. The floor and the lid are in place here already, so that when you come, everything's ready for you. Straps in place, floor sponged up, that's how I do it. Right, we're going to move on to, um, to our system. I'm going to do the same as Jane, just um, to do it my way, and then you guys can find out your, your way of doing it. Uh, next time with a, a stand on it. Brendan. Brendan, sorry, just an open question, yeah? Yes, Daniel. Why would this split be more beneficial than the one that you um, immediately, let's say, in the evening, um, the one-day split? I understand with the smaller swarm, maybe you're doing a split for the heat and stuff? They're making a queen here that's a, a more natural way. It's a supersedure way where the queen pheromone is so weak. They say this queen is old, we're going to replace you. Yes. So they start to make a queen and the, in a queen right system. So it's very natural. If you take it away tonight and you put them somewhere else, and go, oh, we got no queen. Panic. Emergency. It's an emergency. Make a queen. So they rush it. Oh, yeah. So in theory, the rush queen could be inferior because they haven't necessarily chosen the most perfect situation to do it with. The, the other thing is the, the bigger the colony, the more honey or the more productive they are. Yes. So if you've got a, a double deep colony, and you put supers on for honey in a, in a good honey flow, you'll get more than twice the amount, you'll probably get three, three and a half times the amount of honey as a single deep in the same thing. So the stronger the colony, yeah, you've got the benefit of all the bees working together once. You've still got your field bees coming in, you've got your nurse bees, you've got everything still here for 10 days. The whole system, there, yeah. There's no break in the production of the queen, nothing. Everything is getting similar. You're getting fresh nurse bees from the bottom coming up when you take a split off. You're, you're getting everything coming through. So you're going to get a good mix of everything. And you've got a full strength colony that's laying more brood and, and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Whereas yeah. if you split it tonight, they've lost that 50% of their workforce. So they've got to take a little bit longer. They haven't got all the resources to recover quickly. But another question, do you think you can manage this on a commercial scale? Managing a 10 day cycle? Yes. Because it's, uh, yes. Just work with a pen in your pocket. You've got nice big pockets there. I do. Uh, I do. I work with a pen and you write the date on it so that you can track. Okay, uh, I did yeah, that on the first. Those fall on Sundays a lot. Eh? They, you know, beekeeping, you don't, they don't care. Yeah. Bees don't care. Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's no Sunday. Because Tuesdays and Thursdays allow you to do a Saturday. <laughs> Always work Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm going to recap on the one I do now. Okay. Got that one, Darren? 
Big circle, please. Big circle, please. Big circle, yes. Yeah. 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 When we're working, when we find hives that are ready for splitting, our general principle is we mark it with one sand. So we just put little markers that work for you in your head, whether it's a stick of sand or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, These are working nicely, they're drawing foundation even in this top box. You can see the beginning of them drawing out white combs. They're very happy. This is full of nectar. Right in the top here. So it's a it's, it's a nice strong colour. Right. How long has that been together so, to uh, breathe? I want all the bees out of there. This was just a, a space thing. I was just creating space. Right. I like space in my hive to work. So I, I use 32 more frames, so I've got space on each side. But I like to work from left to right because I always stand on this side. So I create space for myself to work from this side. These other frames don't mean anything in the big picture. They're purely there as a, a storage place for nectar and pollen. So if they deformed and a bit skew, it doesn't matter. My concern here is there's no queen excluder between the two boxes, so the queen could be up here, right? So very carefully, you can see that's a poor quality comb, lots of drone brood. It's okay though, we're going to put it on the outside, right? These little bits, we just leave them for the bees to lick clean. What I need to put in this box, guys, I need pollen <coughs> for food, for the brood. I need young larvae for the bees to make a queen from, and I need bees. So I'm looking for three frames of open brood. There's my first one. A bit of a mix up, but I've got some very nice young, young stuff. Got a bit of nectar pollen and some cap brood. So there's my frame number one. You can see they keep the brood together, so there's my frame number two. Beautiful. Right up to the top here. And if you probably look at the bottom, you'll find that, that typical soccer ball thing. Yes, the, the brood here, mm -hmm. so it would have been probably around like that, that brood nest. Okay, what have I got here? This is pollen. Okay, so we're going to stick some pollen on the side here. Now, now there we go. there's another frame of brood. A little bit of brood. So I've got two and a half frames of brood here. That's actually what I need in my split. They can make a queen from that open brood. So I don't need to really go looking further than that for what I'm doing. Right? Nectar pollen. Bit of a poor frame. We'll move it to the outside. Beautiful pollen. Beautiful drawn comb. We'll move that in. Right, shift these frames up. Okay. So, I've got a whole lot of bees on the inside of this box. Just a little smoke to chase them down. The queen can be running around in that wall, so caution at all stages that we don't hurt the poor queen. Okay, and shake it over the hive so we don't drop the queen on the grass. Right. Queen extruder to keep all to keep the queen down. So when we pull the split up there's no queen running around in here. I wanna scrape that first. Nah, leave it like that thing straight. Right. Brendan? My um, my frames I push them all this way now. Because when I pick up mm -hmm. this brood chamber, I pick it up from this side. And the frame's tendency is to fall this way. So when we carry it, we, um, we push the frames this way. So you want to put another frame there in to drink? I'll pass yeah. I suck the plek on the bees to go. I put the ramen in and out and I'm sick to look in, 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 in how many young bees there and work the queen. Or... So, no, I suck... what I do when I, 
when the, when this colony is in production mode, then I shift them to the middle, and we've got one and a half centimeters on each time. But for now, because I'm going to move it, when I pick it up, all those frames are going to come loose, squash the bees between it and everything. So just for when we pull our split off, we're going to leave it like that. And that's Brendan, my prep you, done. Brendan, sorry, if you're going to do any production. Sorry? If you're not going to move the hive and do any production. But this is my split, huh? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just on a yes. question yes. for the 11 frames. If you know you're not going to move that hive, why not put 11 frames? 10 frames are enough. <coughs> 10 frames is enough for our bees. You can squeeze the 11th frame in, but it's so bloody hard to get those frames yeah, out yeah. with 11. There's no space to move, and you're getting in there, and then the bloody top bar pulls out. You go, ah! We all know what it's like when the top yeah. bar pulls out, and then the whole, it's, it's a mess. So I rather work where I, can, where I do a lot of brood nest management, and I want space to move, and I don't want to squash the king. I don't want to fight, I want to be quick. Okay, and then you put new frames in from the open side. I, I put new frames in from the left side here, looking Close at the hive, okay. at position number two, and I push out and take my old frames out from this side. Okay. In the bottom box. Okay. Right. Okay, so what we've got here, as you guys, as I've repeated myself, we've got three frames, two and a half frames of open brood. We've got honey and pollen, and that open brood is going to pull all the young bees up. So by tonight, this is ready to split. So tonight all I'll do is I'll come, pop this off, put it on here. My strap is <coughs> waiting for me here already. Strap it up and onto the bucky. And my spare lid is waiting here. And that'll go onto my split. In a week's time or in four or five days time, I'll come and check it now. And I want to know what's happened to them. Are they, I want to leave them with four or five frames of brood so that they stand for pollination but sometimes they just explode again and you come in there's seven eight frames of brood again and we'll put a second brood chamber generally not though generally that will be made into a pollination unit after one split without any super on it without so you're not going to add that super again i'm not going to add that super again that was the super was to create space to limit swarming i mm. wanted the bees to have space Okay. Okay. Did you guys get that split? Yeah. James, do me a favor, pull that penny scooter out. I'm not doing the split tomorrow. I'm not coming here for one split. So the bay is <laughs> actually very clear for them. I'm just reversing it back to where it was because I'm not coming here tomorrow to do a split. And that uh, three quarter can go on. Greg. Are you in the in the zen of the moment there? Oh, well, Brandon, bring attention to it. <laughs> Brandon? Yes. The top one, how far do you move it? I can't hear you. The top one, how far do you move the split, it? From if the you so should. ideally yeah. I would like to pull this off in the evening because when I place it on its bee site, wherever that may be, I don't want the bees to fly, as I mentioned earlier on. There are going to be a mix of bees. It's predominantly nurse bees, but they're going to be flying bees still inside here. Um, so you want to move this at least three kilometers away. But we'll take it 10, 15 k's away wherever we're going to move to. We don't, we're not going to be in the wheat canola areas. Because as I mentioned, the canola is not going to last for long enough. Okay, so that's our first um, system of splitting. Our second one is this one. And I'm going to show you that. Oh. It's basically, as I said, we're going to catch all the flying bees. But this whole, this whole thing, I can't pick it up. I want to put it over there. I can't pick it up on my own. So, um, this is what I'm going to do. Ja, was hij boeit dan moet je daar gaan doen natuurlijk. Sorry.
Here's the box. Right, so what do we need to put in that box? It's the same again, always the same. Three frames of open brood and resources. Right, James, can I pass it to you? Yeah, cool. That was sort of the outside. Uh, that guy. Can you put that in position one? Okay, I couldn't really catch it. I'm looking for brood. What eggs? Eggs upstairs, the bees eat them. So that's full of eggs. I'm not going to put that in my spit. Here we go. One. Beautiful. I'm going to give them. This one is newly capped. But it's beautiful. That's going to emerge in the split and create a lot of bees. James, can you put this on the far side against the other one? Right, so we've got what? We've got two frames of brood. Maybe one more would be nice. Not full, but it's open. It's. Um, Open lava. So that's my that's my brew, really, guys. Uh, eggs again. Right, this can go there, James, on the side of the brood, please. This can go on the side of the brood. This can go on the side. Of the can you put this next to the brood? It's quite empty. Right. I want to create a relieve congestion in this bottom box. So I'm going to take out if there's any pollen and, and honey because the pollination standards don't allow for a completely congested box full of pollen and honey. So we're considering pollination at all times. Uh, position number two, please. Uh, this was the foundation we added this year. Look what they do on full sheets of foundation, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Like James showed you on the other hive. Put full sheets of foundation. Right, James. One more frame of one more frame of pollen. Normally from this. Uh, eggs and lava. So they've got two, four, six frames of brood here. All of this, and then that two and a half. So we've got eight and a half, nine frames of brood upstairs, and we've got these one and a half frames of eggs. So this queen is really going for it. You don't think it's going to be a little too strong for pollination? <laughs> yes, but I'm going to check it before I do that and maybe do a second split. Okay, so there's many options to this. It's not necessarily going for pollination. It may be a second split or we may rob resources, as James said, to make up splits. At this stage, what am I interested in doing here? I'm interested in doing that split that James is doing over there. Not much. So maybe we're going to move your pollen out if possible. I see that a lot of the pollen going right in the middle of my blue. They plug it up, especially at this time of the year. They plug it up. So it's really working it to, to, to alleviate congestion. Right. I'm working back to front here. I normally stand on that side. That's why I look so awkward. Right. So uh, that's, our, that's our split over there. We can close it up, please, James. Any lid will do for now. Just shake those bees off for me, James. Uh, this guy can just go back on here for now. As a, since we've got seven, eight, nine frames of brood here, they need a bit of space. We can't hurt them at this stage of the, of the, at this stage of the game. There's your split. It's catching all the flying bees. all times the queen can be anywhere here guys be aware of where you're putting your bees what you're doing if i put this lid on top here the queen is going to get stuck up here so i need to make provisions that the queen isn't here right she could be in my lid because i've got this 
open cavity. So let's just shake it out. Right. Put these bags in the lid because the bees are not really good swimmers. Just to help them. Here we go. Look at them running into the hive. This is how we do it, as that song goes. <laughs> One can, if you've got time, you can put a second box on and not put the creamy through. They put it like we have them configured there. But this queen will be continuously laying also and making more and more and more and more. So one can use it as a, as a tool, yeah. as a resource. So those are our two splits and, and James's splits. Um, so we're taking that away today. This one is, can be taken away. I would give it 24 hours to let the flying bees all end up here. So they're going to take a little while. We've, we've upset their whole balance. So as they start to forage, they're going to say, Shh, Okay, this is where our house is. Well, it doesn't help that the floor is closed. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see that because we were set up for a different system. Um, <laughs> so, Brandon, if the flying bees return here, yes, you can actually leave that split there for, for, for a determined amount of time. Uh, I'm going to mark this one because I need to know that it's special. <laughs> and I don't normally do that. I, I must leave that alone for six weeks now, yeah, 46 yeah. weeks. Sorry, your question? You could leave that. The parent. The parent there because all your flying bees are coming back here. Yeah, you, could. you could leave that there for you could. weeks and weeks. Yes. Yeah. 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 Pardon? Yeah, there's flying bees there, but there's also nurse bees there. Yes. Well, it's got all the nurse bees that can't fly will stay oh, okay, behind. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. So you split your you split your workforce, your flying bees here and your nurse bees there. But for how long are you gonna keep the nurse bees all on the house? The queen's there. What for? Maybe they keep you know you've got a dinner like the bees. But the nurse bees are already there, they just can't fly you. They're busy cleaning and giving doing all their jobs in the hive. And the the, the colony will will push them to, do, to become a uh, field piece earlier. They say, hey, go out and bring in food. And so it's just a week that they're going to be a little bit like sitting, sitting and, 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 and fiddling their stuff. So um, when we pull our splits off, I'm going to open up a colony that we split two days ago. Two of them. This is what you want to see left behind. So we split this colony on Wednesday this week. Never split it for me, actually. There's the, there's the, um, the champion who did all my splits on this side. How many splits did we do? 40 this week. We took 40 of all these ones in the double sands repairing colony that we split. I need to use this for pollination. That's my priority at this time of the year. The split is a secondary thing. So I need to make sure that I've kept this up to scratch. So, what is going to be left in this hive? Look how many bees are still in here. Yeah. I haven't checked this one. I would say there's seven frames of bees. You see the space that I've got to move my frame without hurting the bees. That's what I'm. That's why I like at the ten frame, not eleven frame. And then we can check yeah, what is in the hive after the split. There's a little bit of open brood here. Eggs. And we'll count how much brood we've got and we'll see if they're ready for pollination. I would leave this a bit longer. I'm not happy with the strength of this. I might give them an extra week. I'm not in a rush, but I just need to use them at some stage. I don't need to rush it. And I don't want to take chances of putting in substandard hives into pollination. This complies with the basic standards set out by WCBA. It's not my standard. My standard's a bit higher. And um, just on that, Brendan, the other thing you could do is you could move this and swap this to the actual place of a hive that's very strong. And that would just take some of the field bees from the other hive and strengthen this one. So, 
I want to open another another colony. Sorry, I'm James. Just, sorry, Brendan. Yes. Just say it again, James. So you would move this, stop this it, uh, uh, position with one that's very strong. Yeah. Okay. And, and then the your field bees would come back to this one. So this yeah. will be a, another one just to compare what we've got left in our hive. Not massive, but, but they've got potential in a week or two's time with all of this brood. As I said, these 6,000 bees that are emerging out of this brood is just going to populate this hive again. This is full of eggs. The whole frame has got eggs in. Yeah. Right, next frame is full of young brood. Farm of brood. So we've got how many frames of brood here? Pardon? I gave them... Um, I gave them combs in the beginning, here's one of them. This was foundation that, that they drew out. Um, but before they go into pollination, I'll also take away any extra, any extra, too much um, resources. Can you spot the, can you spot the eggs? Okay. Uh, I hope we haven't rushed through it too much. <laughs> I must stop smoking. Can't you you don't smoke? So, um, thank you. So this is our bridge on this site. We had. Um, Close to 350 hives here. And this is how we run it. And we go through our hives. Yeah. The ones that are really strong, we'll split them. The exactly. ones that are too weak, we'll maybe pinch brood and boost them. <laughs> and that's our dance, guys. Up to five. Up to five. Up to five hives per hectare. I think three is a better number, but up to five. Five hectare. Five hives per hectare. Um. Why don't we go back there and sit, uh, maybe um, unpack this and have a debriefing um, without the bees flying around? <laughs> it depends on where the starting point was. Um, it can be three weeks. The queen can lay about a thousand, one and a half thousand eggs a day. So if she's got to lay up one frame, it takes her a few days. And if she's got to lay up a few... Um, um, that brood, once the eggs have been laid, so when it hatches, takes 20 days. So that's three weeks from the egg laying to the hatching. So you do the calculation of how long from the time the egg is laid. If you've only got three frames of bees to get it to 18 frames of bees, you do that equation. I'm trying to get the difference between fine water split and canola split. The time it takes me to build the colony. Yeah. What did Fiona say earlier on? Give food. Yeah, yeah. Don't just rely on the canola. As James said, he's giving pollen patties, he's giving syrup. And feed it non stop. Don't stop. I haven't do I feed from the outside. Don't you have a problem with high beetle with patties inside? I have beetle is a problem when the space is too small for the bees to believe. So when we put patties in, we make them super thin, so that the space on top of the patties is going to go there and, and to um, shepherd those little hive beetles. And yes, it is a problem. So you don't give them two kilos of patties, you give them 250 grams, because they can manage that within a time period. Two kilos are going to last them for six weeks or whatever. You know what I mean? Thanks guys. Awesome man. Um, let's, uh, let's go and debrief back that side and we can uh, maybe <laughs> grab a quick coffee. Cool. <laughs>
Wow, what climate! There's a few of them, there's a few of them running around. I think they're a great way to go for us in, in our climate. This is made in Australia for their for their conditions. They're as tough as they do. This is the power button.